You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Let's just start with a big broad one. What's LSU getting in uh, cornerback seven banks? You know, he's uh, was a highly recruited guy. He came in. He, you know, he played pretty well early in his career. You know, struggled a little bit. You know, the last season, last couple, you know, part of the year prior. But you know, a lot of that was due to the injuries. And, you know, he had a hip injury, I know. You know, coming out of the season, he was thinking about potentially leaving and going, you know, entering the draft. I think he wanted to get another year of better film. Uh, but he's a big guy, like a physical guy. You know, he can probably play. He can play outside. Maybe he can play inside in the slot. Like I said, he's very muscular. You can move him around. Uh, but he, he's a guy that's very physically gifted, and you know, can run well when he's healthy. You know, Bob, we've become accustomed to seeing a lot of these Ohio State cornerbacks go into the draft and go. I mean, Jeff Okuda, Damon Arnett. I mean, you, you know the list. How does he compare? Does he compare to some of those guys who are like really big time NFL prospects? Um, you know, I, I think he shares some of the same measurables as them. And that was one of the things Ohio State, you know, they, they rarely recruit corners under six feet tall. So they have guys that are six foot, six one, uh, that are physical, that can run. And so it kind of checks some of those boxes. You know, he, his, his issue, though, is he's just been battling an injury. And so last year he wasn't able to practice a lot, you know, in the spring. And then you got him up and couldn't really practice a lot during the season. And when you're out there, and you can't really get the reps, especially coming out of like a COVID short year and not having spring ball the year before, kind of hampered his development a little bit. And I don't feel like he was ever really healthy. But you know, the guy has he has the measurables. You know, I don't know if I'm ready to put him on the level of you know, Marshawn Lattimore, <laughs> Denzel Ward, or guys like that who you know, made Pro Bowls and have been great players. But you know, he has all the same measurables, and you know, was recruited by Kerry Combs there. You know, the guy who looks at all these guys the same and has done a great job of developing them. Yeah, shame on me for not mentioning the guy who signed the biggest cornerback contract ever, and then Marshawn Lattimore, who's obviously plays for the Saints. But uh, obviously, Ohio State's turned out a lot of a lot of good defensive backs. Which, Bobby, it's probably one of the reasons LSU fans are excited about this because it's definitely a position of need, and it comes from a, a program that obviously has produced a lot of good talent at that position. Um, let me let me go back a little bit and talk about sort of the the progress through his career. If you could walk us through. Um, you know, seven banks in his, I guess, his process to get on the field because obviously it was a log jam there when he first showed up. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like you mentioned all the great players that Ohio State's had. I mean, they had Jeffrey Okuda and David Arnett there at the beginning, and both of those guys ultimately got drafted in the first round. And like I think mentioned shared a lot of those similar traits and measurables that, you know, a lot of the other corners that we've talked about has. So they've done a you know, good job. And so he had a hard time initially getting in, but. You know, one of the things they like to do is roll their young guys in, give them 20%, 30% of the snaps, keeps your starters fresh, keeps them healthy, and then also gets those young guys a lot of uh, some much needed experience against really talented players and some, you know, in some big games. So they, they throw them out there at any point in time. And he you know, started out very promising in his career because he's a very skilled athlete and possesses a lot of talent. You know, but I think a lot of it was due you know, the, the last few seasons. He just wasn't healthy, and I didn't fully realize it. You know, I'm over practice a lot. You know, I talked to Seven on the sideline, and you know, I don't think he fully realized or let on how bad it was. And so he was playing through some things. And so when you see, like, ah, he looked kind of stiff, or he didn't maybe move quite as well. And then you know, come to find out, you know, he had some pretty serious stuff that it was all recoverable, but it's just a timeline and something you can't get fixed during the season. So you know, he was able to get on the field early, his career in small doses, play a little bit more in his second year. Uh, then, you know, third and fourth year it just was a little bit hazy and muddy just due to some of the injuries that he's had. So you mentioned a hip injury. What else has he dealt with? Um, you know, he's had some knee stuff. You know, and, it's, and I say that, like, just minor things. I wouldn't define the guy as, you know, injury prone. It's okay. like he had always something lagging, but, you know, or nagging. But he had, you know, he's had a hamstring. I think he maybe had a knee. But the, the hip deal was something that this year, you know, I didn't realize that he had to deal with. It was something that was, you know, fairly significant and took him a while to get healed up from. Um, anything, so you said you don't think it's anything that would be like maybe career hindering or anything, but is it, is it something that with the injuries you look at and say, well, that could maybe limit him next year or in the future? Maybe the injuries are why he's not in the NFL draft right now. Yeah, I think that, you know, the injuries are probably why he didn't go into the draft at this point, just because of the timeline of you know, 
would you be able to go, you know, run on pro day? Would you be able to perform in the combine? Would you be able to take those you know, and have those individual workouts? And I don't know if he would have been healthy enough, you know, potentially for that. Um, and I think that's probably why, you know, you know, like to get in the portal, see what else is out there. You've got a great program like LSU that puts a ton of dudes in the league. You've got a new coach in Brian Kelly. It's a position of need for them. And so, hey, this is going to give you a little bit longer to rehab, get healthy, you know, we'll work you in and make sure that you're ready to go and not get you out there before you're healthy, which I think it was just really, you know, you start talking about hips and shoulders. A lot of times those injuries, especially hips, I mean, you're talking, you know, four, five, six months before you're really feeling good. And so I think a lot of it, why this happened now is, you know, maybe he was finally fully healthy and felt confident enough to be able to go. Bobby Carpenter for a couple of more minutes. Um, Seven Banks type of guy that, that could play outside or is he more of a nickel slot type guy? So he's always been an outside guy at Ohio State, but you know, the one thing that you know he has, I and mean, he's a big frame, and like he, you look at him, and he, you know, at times almost looks like a safety, and you know he's gonna have to make sure that you know Brian Kelly's out in that twenty-four hour gumbo that they've got over there at the facility, but you know, he may be a guy that we got to push away and maybe keep out of the bowl <laughs> because you know he's got a propensity. I'm like, dude, I'm like, you get big, you just get muscular, I'm like so. You, know, you want to move inside and play slot, maybe play safety, you can do that. You know, he's got the size and the frame to be able to, uh, but I'm sure once he gets going, he gets rolling and running again, you know, he'll be fine. But he's always kind of been an outside guy while he was with the Buckeyes. And before you go, um, by the way, Bobby Carpenter's on Twitter at BCarp3. You'll give him a follow. Um, we've talked so much about the Brian Kelly stuff here. I'm just curious your perspective, man. The guy you know, played in the Midwest from that area, obviously familiar with Notre Dame, his career there. What's, what's your thoughts on Brian Kelly at at LSU. So uh, I've got a kind of a probably a unique perspective. My brother played for him at Cincinnati for a year. He GA'd for him at Notre Dame for okay. two years. So, I mean, I, I've been around BK for a while. My brother you know, knows him really, really well. I mean, he, he's a demanding coach. He's a tough dude uh, to work for. Uh, but you look at what he did at Notre Dame. You look at what he's done everywhere he's been. I mean, he, he's a successful football coach for a reason. You know, he's done a lot of things and performed it really at a high level. And, you know, you start looking at why he left Notre Dame. And, you know, I understand I, I got recruited to Notre Dame. I and mean, they've got some issues there. I think he ultimately wants to win a national championship. And there's a – well, it's a tougher path. You have more tools to be able to, to do that potentially at LSU. And I think that they were going to give you at Notre Dame. And, and so, you know, he went down there and, <laughs> you know, laugh about the accent and some of the different stuff and the dancing. But the guy's a heck of a football coach. He's a good offensive mind. He does a great job running a program. He said he'll be demanding. He can be a little contentious at times, but you can't really argue with the results. And you look at any great coach, and I would argue to you know try to find a guy who isn't a little contentious at times, and maybe doesn't press on their you know assistants maybe a little harder than they should at times. But that's ultimately when you're pushing and you're and you're that competitive. That's what's going to make you great. And you know, frankly, he's 60 years old. And I think he realizes he's coached more football than he's going to coach. And there's probably a five to seven year window to say, hey, can I come down to LSU? You know, and they've won three championships in the last 20 years with three different coaches. And, you know, for my money, I'm going to tell you that Brian Kelly, I think, is better than two of them, hands down. So, you know, <laughs> I don't think you're going to get an argument here. Man. I don't think people anybody ask, here is arguing at that point. <laughs> well, except people ask, that, can you win down there? I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you this. I love Coach O. I love an entertaining guy. Like, I think Les Miles is a great dude, but. Brian Kelly's a better football coach than both of those dudes, and they both went managed to win a national title. So I'm not saying he's going to win one, but he's going to give you a heck of a good shot. Uh, would you have that, like, just, I'm going to clip that. Maybe we just send that to every Notre Dame fan who just lives in my mentions who doesn't quite understand that right now. I mean, hey, guys, you're not alone, believe me. I, I tell people this a ton. I'm like, Notre Dame they are very antiquated with how they operate. And, you know, they they don't want to have, you know, food available to players 24 hours a day. They want their guys to live in dorms with the normal students for four years because that's what all the other students do. And, like, the reality is in college athletics, like, it's tough to find. You can find guys that will do that, but it's really tough to find a lot of them. And I challenge you this, guys. Like, this is why Notre Dame, they've, they've had a trouble outside of Kaiser. You know, he's been kind of their one quarterback that was drafted fairly high. But we're talking about seven banks. You talk about all the DBs Ohio State's had. Notre Dame, I looked this up, in the last 10 years, I don't think they've had a cornerback drafted, maybe one guy in the third round. 
Mm. So people talk about why they struggle. I'm like, you struggle against Alabama. You know, it's not because you can't stop the run up front. It's because you can't stop the run and play man on the outside. So you either have to choose what you're going to do and how you're going to get beat if you don't have anybody that can ever lock anyone up. And I think that's been one of the biggest issues in their ability to recruit up there at Notre Dame. And I think Brian Kelly was just like, all right, if you guys aren't going to help me, then I'm going to go somewhere that will. And the truth shall set you free. It's just so like, it's so validating to hear from someone that's not sitting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Like, you and I will have a conversation another day about Notre Dame maybe, but um, – uh, Bobby Carpenter, good stuff, man. Appreciate you as always for taking a couple of minutes, man. Thanks for jumping aboard today. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.